Hello there everybody, Sam Strains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome back to another locomotive unboxing. Today we're going to be looking at this, the Hornby LNER N2, I nearly said J50 for some reason then. Uh, this is the N2 and in fact today's is a double unboxing because I have... <laughs> Second thoughts, it might just be the one if I've destroyed this one. No, it's okay because we have this one, this is the, the, the GNR version in the lovely green livery. So uh, yeah, very happy to show these to you. So yeah, these, in fact, let me put this one down. So these actually came out in 1981 and originally these weren't released by Hornby. These were made by Airfix, but then Airfix never got to release them because they were bought by Mainline. So eventually these were released by Mainline in around 1981. And uh, these are currently sold by Hornby, and uh, well, in fact, no, they're not. I think they might be out of stock now. But the Hornby price for these is £104.99, which is quite a lot for a model that came out in 1981. And it is actually completely unchanged uh, from then. Uh, this one is too. The only difference I can find with these is the fact that they now have sprung buffers and they have a slightly improved motor, in fact, a much better motor. Apart from that, it's just paintwork that is different. Um, everything is the same from the 1981, so a little bit steep. Maybe there's a value issue there, who knows? But uh, yeah, very nice locos and uh, looking forward to uh, showing you these. Right, I got this one for £45. This one was, um, I think it was part of the Hornby Advent calendar, actually, so very pleased with that. And this one I got at a model train fair, um, when was it, in April, I think, April of this year. And this one cost me £35 and it is absolutely mint. So fantastic prices for these. I'm very glad I didn't pay the full price. But anyway, let's put these down and uh, let's see how uh, we get on unboxing them. Now I think I'm going to look at the uh, the more modern Hornby one first. So I'm going to pop this one to one side just for a second. But there we are then. There's the box. Lovely LNER black this one. And if I just show you what's on the end of the box, you can see that this one is R number R3465 LNER class N2062 locomotive. 4765 which is of course the running number and I'm showing you this one first because on the back of the box this one has some information so you can see that this one was classified as a 3P by the BR presumably and you also have a whole load of information there which is very good to read so uh, please feel free to pause that and read it as always if you'd like to and then on the far side here we have uh, drawings which are dated 1982 by Hornby and I don't think that can be right because I've seen some photos of the model in 1981 when it was ready to be released by Airfix. So yeah, the drawings must be that old at least, and they certainly weren't done by Hornby Hobbies either. But yeah, I don't know, maybe Hornby decided to draw them as well in 1982, who knows. But uh, yeah, let's get this one out then, and I'll show you what it's like. So uh, first of all then, the outer sleeve of course. There we go. And it's in the block of ice, which is lovely. So uh, always nice to get things out of the block of ice. It saves a lot of damage compared with the other one, which is in foam, of course. OK, we've got the paperwork then. This is the operating and maintenance instructions for the 062 class N2. And inside, yep, yeah, it is pretty basic. In fact, it is clearly just the old uh, mainline chassis, as you can see there. But uh, it does have the nice motor, as I was saying. So uh, yeah, that's just a little bit about how to lubricate it and such. Very interesting if you need to lubricate, but uh, yeah, <laughs> not today. Okay, let's take the sleeve off. There we go. And you'll notice this one has no detail pack. This one is completely detail free. Uh, well, no, it's not. That's not very fair. But uh, there isn't any detail to fit. Obviously, it all just comes on the loco. So, oh, that one's a, a bit awkward. Okay, lift that one up. And uh, here she is, the LNER black version. And it is very lovely, I must admit. Uh, I think I do prefer the green one, that being said, but uh, this one is very nice, as you can tell. Uh, it's got a fair bit of weight to it, I must say. And uh, yeah, it seems to be a reasonably uh, good quality construction. So uh, more on this one in just a second. But for now, let's get that uh, lovely green one unboxed for you. So uh, here it is. And yes, as you can tell, this one is the slightly older Hornby packaging, but uh, it is the same model, just uh, with a different livery, of course. Okay, so let me show you the end of the box on this one. This one is our 2214A GNR 062T locomotive 1763, which is also the running number. Okay, well, there's nothing more to show you on the box, so uh, let's get this one open straight away. So it opens at this side, this one does. 
and get this out. So you've got the lovely photograph, of course, which I won't show you because you're going to see the real thing. And under here, yeah, you've got the same instructions, so I'm not going to show you that again. I think those are the same. And there is the locomotive. Wow. I just, I just saw this at the model train fair and thought for £35, I've got to have it. Um, it is a beautiful livery, and of course I don't have any GNR locomotives, I don't think, in this livery, so uh, yeah, this one is absolutely fantastic. Yeah, it's the same model, but it's amazing what a difference in livery can achieve, isn't it? It really is. So uh, yeah, there you have it, absolutely gorgeous. I'm not sure which one I'm going to review up on the white background, I think I'll probably do the green one, um, but as I say, they are the same models, so you're not missing out if I just show you the one. Okay, well, time to have a little bit of history on the N2 then, and then we'll get on to those for review. Okay, so first of all, some quick shout outs then to people who wanted them. One to Lewis Mendoza and the Flying Scotsman fan and Star Anis YT. Thank you very much, you guys, for getting in touch. I do appreciate that. Anyway, the N2 class originated from the Great Northern Railway, which we've been talking about, uh, when they were built to the design of Sir Nigel Gresley in 1920. After grouping occurred in 1925, the LNER continued to produce the class until 1929, by which time approximately 107 had been built. During their working lives, the class operated small passenger trains around the London area, normally consisting of around two coaches. And although 107 were produced in total, only one has actually been preserved, and the rest were scrapped after withdrawal, which began in 1955. So there you have it then, the beautiful Hornby N2 in the Great Northern Railway Green, and it is just absolutely beautiful, isn't it? It really is. Okay, well let's start by having a quick look at the paintwork then. As you can see, the boiler does have the double banding on it, or triple banding if you like, with the white and black stripes. That does look fantastic, and it is very nicely applied. All the printing work is done superbly as well, including the Great Northern Railway logo on the side of the tanks there, and also the running number on the coal bunker. Uh, very, very nicely applied, and it's uh, certainly that L and the R text, even though that wasn't really a thing when the Great Northern Railway was around. As you can also see, the wheel arches have the lining on them as well, and uh, there's lots of white lining all over the thing, really. It is beautiful, especially around the cab. It just looks fantastic. You can also tell that the running board has been done in a sort of browny purpley colour, which uh, is quite unusual, but uh, very typical of the Great Northern Railway. And I think that is probably one of the nicest things about this livery. The smoke box door, while it is basic and all it has is a separately fitted handrail, it does have a lot of nice paintwork on there as well. And I will show you the buffer beams because they are very nicely riveted. I mean, don't forget this is a buffer beam from 1981, so there's a lot of detail there for the age. Uh, you have the running number printed onto there as well, and uh, sprung buffers, which Hornby have added more recently. So, uh, yep, there you go, you can see sprung buffers. And of course you have a separately fitted vacuum pipe as well there. Okay, well let's have a look at some of the separately fitted parts then. Now the first thing to note is the whistle. The whistle is actually made of metal, which is a nice touch, and that is what I like to see. I really don't like the plastic ones particularly. You also have a fair bit of pipe work around the, uh, around the water tanks, uh, going towards the smoke box. That is always very nice to see. And you also have the separately fitted handrails as well, which go over the top of the tank. There are glazed windows on the front of the cab, as you can see there. They're very nice to see, but unfortunately there is no cab of any kind inside there. It is literally just the motor, which, in my opinion, makes this loco worth a lot less than £105, like Hornby Charge. Let's have a look at the coal bunker then. As you can see around it, you have beautiful lining. I mean, just look at that lining. It is fantastic. The coal is very good as well. It's fairly small scale. It's not the best coal that you've ever seen, I'm sure, but uh, it certainly does the job and uh, it's more than adequate enough for me. And around the back, you can see that there are lamp irons there and yet more nice detailing on the buffer beam. So yeah, I mean, it's not that the Loco doesn't have a lot of detail and uh, for the £35 that I paid for this, I'm absolutely over the moon. But uh, you certainly don't want to be paying any more than, I would say, £50 or something like this. And certainly Hornby's price of £105 is uh, a bit naughty, especially considering it doesn't have a massive amount of detail and also it doesn't have a painted cab. But apart from that, just wow. It's just got such character, hasn't it? Uh, it it's just beautiful. It really is. Okay, well let's reunite her again with her black counterpart and let's get them onto the track and see how they run, shall we? Okay, let's do it. Alright, since I showed you the green one up close for the detail, I thought I would show you this black one up close for the performance. So there she is on the track, and she's about to be coupling up to these three LMA Artique coaches, and of course you only want a few coaches on these because 
in real life they only pulled, you know, a small handful of coaches maybe. So uh, time to get her going then at slow speed, and as I say, these don't have the original Airfix slash mainline motors in them, uh, they have a much better modern Hornby motor in them, which actually gets them running very nice and smoothly, so uh, let me give her a little bit of juice then, and uh, see how she does at those slow speeds. There we are, she's moving. And as you can tell, that is definitely one of the best low speed performances there is. I have noticed at the higher speeds they're a tad noisy, and the green one is even louder in fact, but uh, I really don't have a problem with noise, uh, because I love trying stuff of course, so I can't really say anything about noise. But uh, yeah, as you can tell, that is just beautifully smooth. It really is. There we go bit faster. Over the express points, I know she'll go out of shot, but she didn't stop on the express point, and that is very, very slow. So, yeah, what can I say? Can't fault it at all. Just brilliant slow speed performance. Those motors really do make a big difference. Having said that, though, the Airfix ones run very well as well. Okay, let's go and pick up the coaches. Here she goes, and there are lots of other LNER tank engines out on the layout today, so uh, see if you can spot which ones those are, and uh, there is an odd one out today as well, so uh, see if you can uh, see which one that is, and let me know in the comments. But there we are, as you can see, of course, she'll manage three coaches, no problem. And just coming around the corner, you can see the green one here, and she's got a couple of the ex LNER coaches, I just thought they looked nice with her. So, uh, yep, she's off. And pulling from the front on the inner line we have the original one which I keep banging on about and uh, she's got a little bit of a freight train. So as should be quite obvious this green one here is exactly the same model. The only difference really is that it doesn't have such uh, sophisticated lining. That's it really. Do let me know in the poll then which of the three is your favourite. I think mine straight up as you will know is the Great Northern Green one, just because it's quite an unusual livery and it's not one that you see too often, certainly not on my channel. So uh, that is a real beauty. And uh, I know this goods train isn't strictly realistic because they were passenger locomotives, but uh, I just thought it would save you just looking at teaks all day. So uh, yeah, a little bit of a change there. And the black one looks, it just looks so smart, doesn't it? beautiful really really beautiful so of course we've got three different liveries we've got LNER green Great Northern green and LNER black And now for my ratings then on the lovely Hornby N2s. First of all, detail 7 out of 10. The detail really isn't too bad, but of course some more modern locomotives do have quite a bit more, so 7 out of 10. Performance 9 out of 10. They do tend to be a little bit noisy, but apart from that they have superb slow speed performance and reasonable pulling power too. Character 10 out of 10. That Great Northern one especially is just fantastic. I just totally love that one. I think it's really, really, really good. Build quality, 9 out of 10. I did find that on the black one, which is a more modern one, I found that some of the handrails feel a little bit loose and whatnot, but apart from that, uh, good marks there, 9 out of 10. Now for value, um, the prices I paid I was very pleased with, but I suppose I should really be rating the Hornby prices. So for £105, it's a little bit naughty, it's definitely not a modern locomotive, so uh, 5 out of 10. So overall then that gives the N2 8.27 out of 10, a very reasonable score, and into the ranking she goes then at 21st, just below the 9F there and above the Hornby Edward. They are very good runners, I must admit, but they always were the Airfix ones, well, mainline ones, whatever you want to call them. They always run very, very well. As you can see, there she is, just coming in now. Always very good runners. So, uh, yeah, very, very happy with that, and I'm really enjoying just seeing them run, to be honest. Uh, they are lovely, aren't they? Very full of character. Oh, there we are, just in time. The Great Northern Green version meandering down Gordon's Hill there. 
and I'm sorry to put those coaches on. I suppose the uh, the realists out there will know that those coaches aren't strictly suitable for a great northern locomotive. But uh, if I pretend that in my world that's a preserved locomotive, then uh, yeah, it could easily be seen with those. But apologies nonetheless. I know it's not quite right. So there you have it then, that is the Hornby N2. I know I should have been more cross about the prices, but as I say, the prices I paid were just perfectly fine by me. And uh, as you can see, as soon as you get them out of the box, it's a bit difficult not to fall in love with them. So uh, yeah, that's those. Um, so yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please feel free to leave it a like or even a comment because I do love to get your comments as always. And I haven't showed the Wall of Fame for a little while, so uh, there it is. I do have, I think, two photos at the moment that I haven't put up yet, which I still need to. So uh, if you're one of those two, I am sorry, but uh, I will get round to it, I promise. If you would like to have your own artwork up on the wall, just uh, take a picture of it, or whatever you like, and uh, send it to samstrains.outlook.com, and I will print that out and put that up on the wall for you, and hopefully you'll see it in a video. But for now, folks, once again, thank you very much for watching. If you'd like to check out my Facebook and Twitter pages, please feel free to. Those are at facebook.com forward slash samstrains or twitter.com forward slash samstrains. It will be lovely to see you over there. But for now, folks, thank you very much for watching. I love to have your company once again, as always. And I'll see you next time. Cheers, everybody.